What is up, students? Let's take a minute today to talk about the geologic time scale. All right, uh, some questions and answers about the geologic time scale. Question number one, what is the geologic time scale? In a nutshell, it's a way to show the geologic history of Earth. Uh, why do scientists use this scale? The age of the Earth is so old that humans cannot properly understand its age. Uh, the geologic time scale is a way to help us better grasp the age of the Earth. Uh, how is it set up? The geologic time scale is set up to follow the sedimentary or the, the sedimentary and fossil rock record. So because the sedimentary and fossil record is what we study to know Earth's history, the geologic time scale is essentially set up to mimic that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. All right, so the question to start with is how old is Earth? I just mentioned that it's so old that we have a hard time con conceptualizing its age. Um, if we're talking about relative age, we can say that it's really old. There you go. If we're talking about absolute age, it's approximately 4.5 billion years old. That's billion with a B. Uh, so in a nutshell, yeah, that's really old. And like I said, when you consider that um, human life might go 75, 80 years, 100 years if you're really doing good, um, 4.5 billion years is a really difficult number for us to to, to, to conceptualize, to think about. And so, like I said, the geologic time scale kind of helps us to do that. You guys will be doing an activity later in the week in which you'll be using the main hallway as a way to express geologic time. So you'll see. All right, so let's look at a version of the geologic time scale. And here it is. Uh, and like I said before, the geologic time scale is set up like the sedimentary rock record. So any geologic time scale, and there are bunches of them on the internet, you can find just about any sort of version of geologic time scale that you can imagine. But there are a, a good one is set up like this. And what I mean set up like this is that we start with the oldest stuff at the bottom of our geologic time scale. And as we work our way up the time scale, we get newer and newer and newer. So if I'm looking at when is it now on the geologic time scale? The top of the geologic time scale is now. The bottom of the geologic time scale is billions of years ago. Okay, so just, just know and understand that. When we're talking about the geologic time scale, it's just like it follows the law of superposition. The oldest stuff is on the bottom. The youngest stuff is on the top. All right, good talk about that. All right, now... Um, what I want you to notice in this, you guys, is what I have bracketed right here. So if I look at this geologic time scale, this first bracket, you guys, this is the last 500 million years, which is a lot of time. But if we look here, the rest of it, the, the whole of the rest of time is compressed into this little area right here. So let's take a closer look at that. So you might notice that the way this geologic time scale is drawn and the way that many of them are drawn is that we highlight the last 500 million years and we sort of minimize that first 4 billion years. And so you might be wondering, well, why is that? And in reality, it should look like this, okay? If we were really showing what geologic time looked like, this would be the last 4 billion years right here, and this would be this last 500 million years. So why do we why do we focus on this in, instead of this when there's so much more time down here in the geologic time scale? So if we look at this, like I said, we minimize this first 4 billion years and then we maximize this 500 million years and you might be wondering why that is. Well, here's why. What it comes down to is this, you guys. It comes down to multicellular life. So if we look at the first 4 billion years of the geologic time scale, there really isn't much in the way of multicellular life. This planet was molten material, and then it was rock, and then it was ocean and rock, and then it was um, ocean and rock and rain and clouds, and this atmosphere was trying to develop, but there really wasn't much in the way of life. There were some you know, single-celled organisms, some viruses, some jellyfish, but just not too much going on. And then all of a sudden, about 550 million years ago, we see this definition, we see this explosion in life. So we start finding all of these fossils in the sedimentary rock record that show this much more complex life. And so that's when we really start focusing uh, our attention on the geologic time scale in, in the rock record is when we start seeing all this really cool stuff in sedimentary rock that we didn't see in the first 4 billion years of this planet, which is completely awesome. 
All right, so let's take a closer look at this time scale so that you can read it intelligently because that's the whole point of this conversation is that you can look at the geologic time scale and it will actually make some sense to you. Okay, so if we look at the geologic time scale, and for the purposes of eighth grade, you guys, we're really just going to focus on the last 500 million years, okay? You could take a paleontology class in college where you really study the Precambrian, this, this, this time four billion years ago to about 500 million years ago. You can. There's, you know, there's, there's entire studies, entire courses on just that section of time. But for our purposes in this class, we're going to focus on these last 500 million years. So if we look at the last 500 million years, we divide time in a couple of different ways. We have three large divisions. These are called eras. So uh, the youngest era, the one at the top here, is what we call the Cenozoic era. And then the Mesozoic and the oldest one is the Paleozoic. So if you were to be asked what are the three eras uh, in the last 550 million years ago, you would say the Paleozoic and then the Mesozoic and then the Cenozoic. Paleozoic being the oldest, Cenozoic being the youngest. What happens then, you guys, is that we divide these eras into something called periods. So the Paleozoic uh, era is made up of the Permian, the Carboniferous, the Devonian, Silurian, Ordovician, and the Cambrian periods. The Mesozoic is, named, is, is split up into these three periods, the Cretaceous, the Jurassic, and the Triassic. Oh, all of a sudden, look at that, that word, Jurassic. You have heard this word a bazillion times, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 2, Jurassic World, Jurassic Universe. And now you know where the word comes from. The word comes from a, a geologic time period, a period within the Mesozoic era. And then finally, the Cenozoic era is, is broken up into the tertiary and the quaternary periods. So I have good news, you guys. You live in the quaternary period. Hooray! So again, the geologic time scale is split up into eras, and then those eras are split into smaller sections of time called periods. All right. So if you'd like to know, and this is always a big mystery to my students, is how to pronounce all of these different eras and periods. It's not so scary, you guys. This is about a, a minute and a half long video that just tells you how to say each of these words so that you too can talk intelligently about the Cretaceous period or the Quaternary or the Tertiary. And you know what? That's half the fun, I think. I'm not going to make you watch it right now. We'll skip through that. You can watch it on your own time. All right, so... We have these eras and these periods, and so you might be asking yourself, how do scientists decide where to draw these lines between eras and periods? What separates the Paleozoic from the Mesozoic or the Mesozoic from the Cenozoic? Or what separates the Cambrian from the Ordovician? Why do they decide to draw these lines where they draw them? Well, and that's why I've highlighted this section right here. It's that the lines are drawn based on what organisms are found in the sedimentary rock or no longer found in sedimentary rock. So we have this line here that separates the Precambrian and the Paleozoic because we saw this big explosion in multicellular life. We had very little in the Precambrian, and then all of a sudden we start to see more and more and more of it as we go. And so that's one of the lines that's drawn, that, that line between the Precambrian and the Paleozoic. So with each of these lines, you guys, it's because some sort of species emerged or some sort of species went extinct, and that's how they draw these lines. So what it means, you guys, is that as we study the layers of sedimentary rock, we note these big differences. That's how they draw these lines. And what we've learned from looking at the sedimentary rock record and looking at the fossils within it is that there have been many times within Earth's history where species have gone extinct, and sometimes where many species have gone extinct pretty much all at the same time. So when we see these disappearances of, of large numbers of organisms, we call them mass extinctions. And mass extinctions are the most common way that we divide eras or periods. So let's talk a little bit about mass extinction. So extinction means that you have a species that dies out and you're, it, it no longer is found on the planet. And so, you know, of course, we all know that like dinosaurs are extinct or dodo birds are extinct or things like that. But let's talk mass extinctions. So... Mass extinction events are when 75% or more of a species are shown in the rock record to have gone extinct in a fairly short period of time compared to each other. Okay, 
Um, and that means that you have these big die-offs of large amounts of species all at once. And by at once, we're talking geologic time, so within a few thousand years. There have been several extinction events in Earth's history, but there have only been what scientists pretty much agree are five mass extinction events. And so what I've done is that these red lines that you see uh, on the geologic time scale are the times that we've seen these mass extinctions. So we've seen uh, a mass extinction between the Ordovician and the Silurian, between the Devonian and the Carboniferous. And then we've seen a, what, what you would say is a, a, like a super mass extinction between the Permian and the Triassic. That's the, that's the mass extinction that separates one era from the next because at this particular extinction right here at the end of the Permian, which marked the end of the entire Paleozoic era, 96% of all life on this planet was eliminated. So something happened and most of it was eliminated. And then, of course, we have uh, the, probably the most famous mass extinction, which is the one that ends the Mesozoic and starts the Cenozoic, so the, the Cretaceous extinction. And this is the extinction that we have the end of the dinosaurs, okay? So you might be asking yourself, what causes mass extinctions? And the truth is, it's not entirely clear. You know, we weren't there. But scientists do have ideas about what, uh, what has caused these five mass extinctions. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty about most of them. They're pretty certain, though. There's a lot of evidence and strong evidence of what caused the, this extinction. So this last extinction up here, this last mass extinction, the Cretaceous mass extinction, there's a lot of evidence that shows that this extinction at the end of the Cretaceous was caused by a large meteorite striking Earth. Uh, somewhere around the Yucatan in Mexico, and there's very compelling evidence that this was the event that started this mass die-off, which, which was about, I want to say it was either between 76 and 80 percent of all species, including the dinosaurs, uh, were, were eliminated during this extinction. So there, that's very strong evidence for that. However, if we look at this next bullet, it says scientists believe that the event uh, that ended the Permian, they're not entirely sure, but there's a lot of growing evidence for this one, that this one was actually caused by climate change. Rapid climate change caused by a series of massive volcanoes in what is now Siberia. So they're gaining evidence for that. There's still a lot. That, that's a controversial theory. There's still a lot of speculation. And again, it's hard to tell because, like I said, we weren't there. But there's no evidence um, of a huge meteorite like there is for the one at the end of the Cretaceous. Now, if you're interested, because that's pretty much all I have to say about the geologic time scale. Really, the big takeaways are this, you guys, that we want you to take away about the geologic time scale. We want you to know that... Um, the early part of geologic time, the Precambrian, as we call it, as you can see, Precambrian, which was the last, uh, the, you know, from present or uh, from about 550 million years ago to kind of the start of Earth, there really wasn't much happening in terms of multicellular life. A lot of Earth processes just making the planet, making the crust, making the oceans, making the atmosphere, that was happening with the first 4 billion years. And that really, when we're talking about the, the, what we consider to be the more interesting part of, of the geologic time scale, it's that last 550 million years when we start to see this big explosion. So that's the first thing to remember. The next thing we want you to remember is that this last 500 million years or so is split up into three separate eras, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, Cenozoic, and that each of these eras is split into shorter periods, and those are, of course, all the names of the periods. The last thing we want to make sure that you walk away with is, is this idea of mass extinction. That's how we separate one era from the next or one period from the next. And that a mass extinction means that you have um, an extinction event where 75% or more of organic species are shown to have gone extinct. And that we've had five mass extinctions uh, in the past 540 million years or so. And then, of course, there's a couple of theories out there about what causes mass extinctions. And if you're interested, if you'd like to watch a video to know more about the Cretaceous extinction event, then click on this link below, and it will take you to a video called The Day the Dinosaurs Died. This is not required watching. It's about an hour long. Maybe it's even a little bit longer than an hour. I can't remember. Maybe more like a 90-minute video. It's really great. It talks about the evidence they have to support this theory of this meteorite that, that hit Earth and ended the Cretaceous period. So, again... Totally up to you if you want to watch that, but I think it's a pretty good video. But anyway, there you go. Everything you need to know, well, it's a good start of learning about the geologic timescale. Peace.